Natural beauty is better, right? You know that I am a huge proprietor of natural products, but unfortunately there are certain brands that are trying to make a quick buck and are actually ripping people off. And this can be harmful or even toxic to your health. Today I want to share with you three ways that natural beauty products can be toxic and harmful in your own routine just so that you're aware of this information and can make the best decision for yourself as a conscious consumer. The first thing that we need to do here is actually define natural beauty. What is it? With terms like organic and natural and healthy, these all have different definitions. And when natural is actually printed on a bottle, there is not a set definition for it. When organic is printed on a bottle, there is a definition. Certain ingredients need to be created in a certain way that certifies that product to be organic. But with natural, that verbiage, that word, there is no standard or no definition. Also, there is no seal of approval. Sometimes you'll see a seal that says it is certified organic by a certain organization, or a cruelty-free seal that is certified by an organization, or a gluten-free seal that is certified by an organization. But for natural, there is no specific guideline and no seal. And when you think about it, Anything in life could be considered natural. Lead, arsenic, those things are natural. They're naturally found in nature, but they're highly toxic. So just because something is natural doesn't mean it's safe. The first way that natural beauty can be dangerous is when it comes to essential oils. Essential oils are wonderful. They can be amazing for health and have been used in aromatherapy and other treatments, but sometimes essential oils can damage your health and actually pose a threat when it comes to your skincare products. Something that needs to be taken into account when it comes to essential oils is that they are potent. They are naturally derived and you're basically taking a plant and squeezing it and crushing it to the point that something like grass or a lemon or eucalyptus or lavender actually produces oil. That is a very, very concentrated piece of a very natural substance. And when you think of essential oils, they are kind of like medications because they are so potent and they do cause results in your skin and in your body. Just the way you would not start taking prescription medications that a doctor didn't prescribe you, essential oils can have medicine-like effects when used in certain ways. And unfortunately, doctors don't usually prescribe essential oils, and a lot of essential oils can be purchased online and in bulk. You don't know how they're going to react with you, you don't know how potent they are, and they could cause damage. In addition, not all essential oils are pure. Although in an ideal world, you're actually receiving what you purchase, sometimes companies will dilute essential oils or have a little bit of an essential oil along with other fillers, other products, and even byproducts such as lead or splinters that happen in the manufacturing process. You don't always know what's in them. So what does this actually mean? Misuse of essential oils can cause skin sensitivity. This can make your skin more sensitive to other products, it can cause burning, which can actually turn into scarring and pigmentation, etc. Essential oils can cause these rashes and can even bring out allergic reactions if you are sensitive or allergic to one of the byproducts or ingredients within those oils. Again, even if you're not normally allergic to grass, if you take 15 pounds of this grass and consolidate it into one ounce of grass oil, you might start to have a reaction. So that is just something to be aware of. The next time that natural beauty products can be dangerous is when they vary from batch to batch. When any beauty product is made, it's usually made in large quantities. They have these big vats that they fill with a bunch of ingredients, mix them together, and dispense them into small little bottles. Now this is done all throughout skincare, whether it's natural or whether it's chemical. But when it's chemical, they're synthesizing these things in labs where they have complete control over what's happening. When these things are naturally derived, things such as the weather and the heat, things such as the temperature and moisture in the air, and even other ecosystem and environmental factors can play a role in how those plants are produced. And since natural beauty usually is plant derived, this can have a huge impact. Think of this like grapes and wine. When it comes to fine wine, one bottle from a specific winery can be dramatically different than a bottle from the same winery on a different year. When grapes are grown, they rely heavily on the environment around them. They rely on the sun, they rely on the water levels, they even rely on the minerals that are in that water. And if that changes from year to year, if one year you have a ton of rain and it's really, really nice and warm, and the next year it's like a desert and it's hot and there is no rain, the actual quality of that grape is going to change, and therefore the batch of wine is going to taste different. It's funny that I say this as a non-alcohol drinker. But what can I say? I come from a family of Italians. 
Well, natural beauty has the same principle. If you are using skincare that is plant derived, those plants can differ from batch to batch. If one year there's a lot of water and ideal growing conditions, those plants could have really high phytonutrients and really benefit your skin. If on another year there is a drought or the conditions aren't just right, unfortunately, that batch of products might not even be effective. You could be wasting your money on a product that doesn't even have phytonutrients, antioxidants, or the beneficial ingredients that you're looking for. It also means that if you buy a product when the batch wasn't ideal, and you found that it worked really well for your skin, if that batch changes and becomes more potent during another year, you might buy the same product again and actually have a reaction to your skin that is much more intense. And especially if you have sensitive skin that is prone to acne, that can be a big problem. The very last time that natural can be dangerous is when it comes to product combining. Let's get honest. We are girls and we have more than one brand in our medicine cabinets. We use more than one product in our beauty routines. I bet you if you open up your cabinets, you see at least five brands on the low side and on the upper side, maybe even 50, maybe even 100 if you're a beauty guru. <laughs> but when it comes to mixing brands, if done wrong, this can actually be toxic for your skin. Think about it this way. Sodium, a natural element, what happens when you put pure sodium and water together? Boom! You get a dangerous, deadly explosion. Usually, skincare does not cause explosions on your face, but when mixing the wrong ones, you can have adverse reactions. One specific example of this is when using carriers, such as lemonine or another essential oil. There are certain molecules that are so small that they actually carry other larger molecules across a cell barrier. Think about it like paving a path. If you wanna get down to the beach and there's just a bunch of shrubbery and greenery, it's gonna be a little bit hard. But if you have 50 people walking that path all the time or somebody taking a shovel and carving it out, they're gonna create a path that makes it really easy for people to get down to the beach. There are certain molecules in your skincare that can do that. Now, if your skincare is working in a beneficial way, that's wonderful because it's going to be effective. But if you are using one brand of skincare that creates that opening and is a carrier and another brand of skincare that has a chemical that is not supposed to penetrate so deeply, that can be very dangerous. This is especially dangerous if mixing high potency prescription chemicals that are synthesized in a lab from a doctor and natural beauty products that do contain essential oils and things. Again, these are chemicals, these are molecules, these are things that your body will absorb, react to, and store. And depending on how you mix them, they can be beneficial or they can be toxic. When it comes to natural beauty, you know that I am a huge user and proprietor. I do have many videos on YouTube about my favorite natural beauty products, and I'll actually leave a list down below of beauty products that I do trust. But unfortunately, there are some brands out there that are trying to use you to make a quick book and selling you things that might not always be pure, and there are ways that you might be using natural beauty products which are not ideal for your health. So I think that education is empowerment, and just by knowing these things, you can be a more conscious consumer. I hope that you learned something today. If you did, be sure to let me know, and of course, if you have any other questions, post them in the comments below. I also want you to think of one person who is either on a natural beauty journey or loves natural beauty, but maybe is just starting off and doesn't know what to look for. There's a little arrow in the top right corner that you can click and send this video directly to them, so at least they know what to look for and what to be aware of. I love you guys to pieces. I hope that you are enjoying this gorgeous day, and I cannot wait to see you all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.